agricultural methods of pest control. A. Growing resistant varieties. Plants which are resistant to pest attack are normally attacked by only a few pests which do not cause economic damage. Even when such pests attack the crops, they do very little damage on the crops. Entomologists and other scientists at agricultural research stations select and breed plants which are resistant to some specific crop insect pests. When they succeed to do so, the resistant plants are multiplied in order to produce planting materials. Plants which are resistant to insect pests have features or characteristics which make insects unable to make contact with the plant or fail to cause damage on them for example, hairy leaves, hairy stems or panicles, secretion of toxic substances, leaves with a thick cuticle or thick stems. I resistant plants may also have an odor, color, taste or texture which is not preferred by the insect pests. In some cases, resistant plants are able to withstand attack by insects. For example, when sorghum shoot fly attacks sorghum plants, if favorable soil and moisture conditions are present, the plants may grow vigorously producing a lot of tillers. Such growth compensates the tillers which were damaged by the shoot flies. Bee crop husbandry practices harmful effects of crop pests can be reduced by using certain cultural or husbandry practices in farming. Practices which are useful for this purpose include the following, i. Removal of insect infested crop plants and the destruction of crop residues. 2. Crop rotation 3. Planting a trap crop 4. Early planting or sowing v. Observing a closed season v. Sowing or planting disease free planting materials, seeds, tubers and cuttings 7. Close spacing 8. Destroying alternate host plants. I removal of infested plants and the destruction of crop residues. Plants which are infested by insects act as a hiding place and a breeding site for the pest. Remains of crop plants are called crop residues. Crop residues act as a hiding place and a breeding site for some insects. The removal of infested plants or infested parts of plants and the destruction of crop residues can help a lot to reduce the population of some insects. For example, if all dry stalks of maize are removed and burnt after harvest, the population of stalk borers in the next season generally becomes very small. Other pests which can be controlled by the removal and destruction of crop residues or infested crop parts are sweet potato weevils, rhinoceros beetle, on coconuts, coffee berry borers, American bollworms, pink bollworms, cotton stainers and melon fly. 2. Crop Rotation Insect pests may also be controlled by crop rotation. This method is particularly suitable for pests of annual crops. Some of the pests which can be controlled by crop rotation are groundnut aphids, maize stalk borers and sweet potato weevils. 3. Planting a trap crop. Some insects tend to feed on plants other than those which they normally attack and cause serious damage. Plants which are normally not seriously attacked by such pests can be interplanted with the crop plants. Alternatively, such plants may be grown on the boundaries of the field. If this is done, the pests tend to be attracted by such crops so that they do not attack the field crop. For this reason, they are called trap crops. The pests therefore stay and feed on the trap crops instead of attacking the crop. When the insects are on the trap crops, the trap crops are sprayed with an insecticide in order to kill the insects. For example, maize can be planted as a trap crop in or around a cotton field to reduce American bollworm infestation on cotton. When maize is at the tasseling stage, it attracts the moths of American bollworms so that infestation on cotton is reduced. 4. Observing a closed or dead season. A closed season or dead season is a period during which a particular kind of crop is not grown at all in a certain area. During such a period, all crops of that particular type are uprooted and burned. For example, in an area where cotton is grown, farmers have to destroy all cotton crop residues after harvesting cotton. This has to be done by 15 September of each year. Then farmers are not allowed to grow cotton until the next season in order to control American bollworms, pink bollworm, 
spiny bollworms and cotton stainers.